everybody, welcome back to the uh, video compilation that we're doing about home charcuterie today. Um, I appreciate you watching my videos. My name is Calvin Schnooker. I'm a master butcher here in the Bluegrass region in Kentucky. Today we're going to be breaking down a pork shoulder and working on a couple different projects that I'm going to break into some separate videos. We'll be curing a copa, which is a whole muscle shoulder roll. We're also going to be making a different uh, batch of salami today. I'll show you everything from how to cut it up and bone out a pork shoulder to the different seasonings you can use, the different flavor profiles we can make, how to clean our casings, how to stuff, and then also the basic setup on my cure chamber. So all those videos you're going to see off to the right hand side, you can click on those based on your interests. And again, I really appreciate you watching these videos and hopefully you get to learn a little bit about how to undertake these projects at home. They're fun, they're easy, and they're really affordable. Um, and so the first thing we need to talk about when we're thinking about doing home charcuterie is the sanitation that we're going to be using on our equipment. It's really important that since we're not going to be cooking these products, um, I don't use a hot smoking technique. The only way I know that these products are safe when they're done is that we're safe all the way through the process. So what I like to do is I start out with my butcher block. And what I've done today is I've wiped this down with hot soapy water. And then I've also come back with a cold bleach solution about a teaspoon of bleach in two quarts of cold water. I've wiped this down thoroughly with it and I've let that air dry. You can see off to the side here, I also have my equipment that I'm going to be used today. It's gone through the same process. I have my scale, my knife, and my steel, all my different steel bowls. I have my hot soapy water. I have my cold bleach water solution. I've touched all of the contact surfaces that we're going to be using today, including my mixer grinder. And what we're, why we're doing this is that Throughout the process, when you're cooking things in your daily life, you might cook some chicken breast, you might use some eggs, and you're, you know, you're making an omelet or something, and maybe you didn't effectively clean up. We want to make sure that everything that we're going to be touching today is completely clean before we start. And so that's really important. The other important thing we need to go over is where you're sourcing your meat from. Some of us um, in the meat trade are really lucky to be able to source locally raised, antibiotic-free, hormone-free animals. If you can do that, that's the best route to go, especially getting a heritage breed hog. That's going to make really excellent charcuterie. The meat has a little bit darker flavor to it. There's more fat. They're not raised on these corn-fed diets. They've been able to walk around outside. It's going to lead to a better end product if we do it that way. Today what we're going to be breaking down is a Boston butt roast that I got at my local Mega Mart. I'm using this as an example because that's what the majority of people are going to be able to source is from their local grocery store, talking to their meat department guy, talking to the meat clerk, figuring out what can I use. So we're using a Boston butt today. We need to make sure that there aren't any additives in this Boston butt. Um, the majority of the packing companies don't use an additive solution, but a couple do. So we need to just make sure that if there isn't a solution added, that should be labeled on your package, but you also need to check with your meat clerk to see if maybe that meat was repackaged into a new um, package that doesn't have that information on it. And so what you're looking for is no solution added. You want all natural and you want fresh never frozen. The fresh never frozen part is important because when you freeze meat, all of those on the cellular level, all of that water crystallizes and freezes. When you thaw it back out, all of those cells have burst effectively and it leaks a bunch of the moisture out of the meat which is going to end up with a drier end product when we're talking about our charcuterie. And so the other thing we need to worry about is if the solution's in there, what that is adding is some chemicals, some different tenderizers, and also sodium which is our biggest enemy. We're going to be adding an exact proportion of sodium based on weight into these products to man maintain an effective cure to guard against botulism. It's also going to give us a safe product that we can enjoy with our family and friends. So with those two things in mind, we're ready to start on our project for the day and let's bring our pork shoulder out and get going. We are going to be breaking it down into its requisite parts to work on some home charcuterie projects. We're going to be breaking this down into a couple different muscle groups. The first one is here. It's the capicola. That's what we're going to be making out of it. It's a dry cured whole muscle, um, similar to a prosciutto. So you get that nice hammy flavor when you're done with it. The rest of the shoulder, I'll be showing you how to bone it out effectively um, if you buy this so that you can turn it into sausage and get the most meat possible out of it. So what we're going to start out with here, you have a nice sharp knife. Again, once you buy your Boston butt from your butcher and you've been talking to him a while, take your knife in, ask him to sharpen it, he'll do it for you. Buy a filet mignon from him as well, he'll enjoy that. Um, so what we're going to do first is, what I'm going to show you is the different muscle groups here on the Boston butt. 
So this is one that I picked up at my local Mega Mart. If you have your own butcher, you can go and source one from them locally. Um, if you have the luxury of buying a whole hog, you want this shoulder to be broken a little bit longer. This shoulder here was broken about the fourth rib in off the hog. And when the hog was alive, it was walking around like this. The foot's down here, the neck's over around this area. The rest of the loin extends this direction where your pork chops are from. And so the first muscle that we're going to break off is what's left of the loin. It's where the loin ties into the neck. Um, so the neck was on this side over here. It's where the head was. This is a nice working muscle group. You can see that I have a couple different striations of fat here. That's going to be great once we slice into that. You'll get those nice translucent bands of fat once our copa is all cured. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find this natural seam where this main cut, it's almost round when we pull this off of here. It's going to connect in through. So if you can see here, there's a line right along the top that comes down around and then scoops underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what's called the pull and seam method. I'm going to be pulling with my left hand. I'm going to be coming through the resulting seam with my knife sharp knife. I'm not cutting through here. I want these muscles to break off in a natural way. They're laying in here the way that I want to pull them off. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to just start with a nice cut. I'm going to come underneath here and I'm going to be into the seam. Now you can see that I'm right in between the fat and the muscle here. I'm just pulling this muscle group off. All I'm doing is pulling back with my left hand and I'm coming through with my sharp knife on my right. And as I separate this down around, you can see that this is just rolling off here. So I have what's going to be left for my grind. And you can see here that this is what our capicola is going to be made out of. If you notice in the store, it's got that nice round shape. We're going to be stuffing this into a beef bun when, we're, when it's all said and done in a couple weeks when it's done curing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to clean this up off the edge. Just set this. We've broken our copa roll off here. We left this nice layer of fat on the outside. That's going to be the flavor once we're done curing here. Um, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to weigh this up. Now the recipes that I'm going to be using today, I'll post them all in the comments section and they're all based on percentages and proportions so that you can adapt these recipes to your use at home no matter the size of the shoulder that you have or what muscle group that you're curing, curing you're going to be able to use these same percentages and proportions throughout all of your different curing charcuterie projects. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to weigh this up and record the weight. It's coming in at about 925 grams right now. And so we'll just set this aside and then we'll start working on the rest of our pork shoulder and breaking that down into the different muscle groups that we'll be grinding to make our other sausages. So we started today with about an eight and a half pound Boston butt shoulder roast from our grocery store. What we're left with after we pulled our copa roll off is about a six pound roast with our bones still in. We have our top blade section, this is the outside of the hog, our bottom blade section. I'm going to peel this out so that we can make our different sausages using our pull and seam method. I'm going to be coming along these natural breaks in the muscle. Um, this is going to yield enough for about two different sausage recipes. I like to go with about two and a half pounds of meat for each one of my recipes. Um, that gives me about eight to twelve sausage lengths cased in bratwurst casing. Um, that's plenty for you and to share with your friends. It also makes a quicker curing process so in case you're playing around with your different recipes you're not waiting a month to figure out that something didn't work. You'll know in a couple weeks here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to break these muscle groups out. I'm going to show you the most effective way to bone this shoulder blade out. As you see, there are a couple different ways that this bone is running inside the meat. So we're just going to stop, start with our bottom blade section. I'm just going to, again, I'm coming into the seam. I'm pulling back with my left hand, and all I'm doing is tracing along where the meat's still hanging on with the tip of my knife here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that any of these little breaks in the bone or anything else is coming with it. There may be a little cartilage on your top section here. There may be some bones. This is where the neck lay when they pulled this off at the slaughter plant. So I'm going to come through here. I'll make sure that I don't have any hard tissue. Um, again, we can do this at the end and check it over, but it's easy as you go along. If you feel something that's hard, something grisly, then we'll cut it out. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them around the side of this bone here. I came to the end of my muscle group and I can see that this is where my bone is laying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around the outside here. And how this bone is shaped is it's flat on this end and then it runs into the inside here and the bone then curves up. So what I'm doing, see I didn't cut this clean, 
all I did was to continue to pull back with my left hand as I'm coming through the meat. And what's that, what that's going to do is going to allow the muscle groups to just come apart on this bone. I'm not going to be able to get this as clean with my knife as I'm going to be able to get it if all I'm doing is pulling backwards. So that's about as clean as I'm going to be wanting to get this at home. I don't need to be grinding the scraps. Um, what I like to do is if you roast this for, at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes, throw it in some water with some vegetables, you just made yourself some pork stock. Pretty easy. So now what we're left with is our boneless pork shoulder roast. Now again, this is weighing in with the bone in around six pounds. I bet we're probably around five and a half pounds right now. And what I'm going to do is just going, I'm going to try to break this about in half so that for future projects, I know I can just pull this out of my freezer, chop it up into the little pieces and I'm ready to go. So I'll weigh this up. Right now we are at five and a half pounds. So what I'm gonna do just for diversity's sake, you can see the different muscle groups run this way along the Boston butt. That's because this is how it was walking along when it was a hog in life. You know, so this muscle had its certain task. You can see the fat is mostly on the outside, and then it's also distributed through these different muscle groups. If I cut through this one, I'm going to end up with a section of really fatty pork and a section of lean pork. Since I'm not going to work with all of this today, what I'm going to do is just try to break this in half, get about two and a half pounds worth, and then that's where we'll start working on our other sausage. The rest of this can just be put into your freezer, throw this into a crock pot, you can make a great pork roast with it, um, or you can just continue to keep it frozen and work on it for your other charcuterie projects. So what we're going to do is we're going to weigh this up. I want two and a half pounds, so we're looking for two pounds, eight ounces. We're a little bit heavy here, um, but that's going to be okay. We'll trim a little bit of this away when we start working on our project. So from here, if you want to click on the resulting videos, I'll show you how we're going to break this into salami, and then we'll also continue working on our copa. And I hope that gives you a nice introduction on how to break down a pork shoulder and the different ways that you can use it to create some different home charcuterie projects.